Jerry here, Kale Media. I'm here with uh, Tony Superfly, isn't it? Yeah. Tony Superfly Brown. Superfly Brown. And uh, you're having you're having a great stretch uh, of, of performances. So uh, I suppose a good place to start is your last fight, a very serious opponent, and you went the distance, an eight rounder. Yeah, um, my last fight was against uh, Kasim the Dream Oma. Um, he came to the ring with uh, a wealth of experience. He was a former world champion. He'd been in there with some of the pound for pound Hall of Famers. Um, so it was a good fight for me. Um, I learned a lot in that fight and I had a good performance and I won as well. So that's the aim of the game. That's no journeyman. No, he's not a journeyman, no. Um, you know, he was cute in there. He was, do he had, he was doing little subtle things. He was able to ride my shots well. Um, and I knew he, was, he wasn't he was going to be the type of guy who was going to blast out of there. But it was a good opportunity for me to practice things and uh, implement things we were doing in training. So I was happy with the performance. Yeah. And, and that was like 4 and 0. So, I mean, that, that seems like a really big jump up in four fights. What's going on here? Um, listen, I'm, uh, I'm 26 years of age, I uh, had a good amateur career, um, I've got a good pedigree and I've often inspired some great guys so I know what my level is at and uh, I'm not really here to wait around, I want to get to the top as fast as I can. Yeah. So. And anyway, so tell me, another big test this weekend, so t tell us about that and your opponent, there's no, no, no dog either right here. Yeah, um, you know, whenever uh, whenever we're picking opponents for me, it, it's, a, it's a must for me that they have to be higher than me in the rankings and they have to come to the ring with a little bit of something about them. I want guys who are coming in there to fight and guys who want to win. I don't want guys who are just going to fall over for me. So uh, this guy's coming and he's going to have real belief that he's going to beat me. Um, and, uh, you know, he's not. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm ready for him. Uh, I've had a great camp. Um, I'm razor sharp mentally and physically. Um, and I've had great performances in sparring. He's going to come forward. Um, very aggressive pressure fighter. Um, a bit shorter than me. Uh, he's a durable, strong guy. I think he's had a couple of stoppages. But uh, to be honest, I'm not too concerned about him. I'm just concerned about implementing my own game and imposing myself. And uh, I think it'll be a good night for me. Yeah, but make no mistake. I mean, this is a competitive fight. I mean, yeah, it's a competitive fight. Um, you know, uh, that's what I get ready for. I train for competitive fights, so um, it's not like it's going to be a shock or a surprise when I get in there and have a competitive fight. That's what I've trained for the last number of weeks for is a competitive hard fight, and uh, I'm looking forward to Saturday night. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, you look. You're, I, I'm reading that you you have things in the pipeline for the very near future, but we're, without revealing anything much, um, you're going you're going across the Atlantic pretty soon. Yeah, listen. There's 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 a lot of plans in place for me, and um, things are going in a good direction. But uh, from my own point of view, uh, my vision stops at Saturday yeah, night. I course, don't look yeah, past yeah. Saturday. Um, you know, it's great to have things going on in the background. Other people making plans for me, but from from my own point of view, all my focus is on Saturday night. I take it one fight at a time, one performance at a time, yeah. and that's the way I'm going with it at the moment. Well, one thing I've like one thing I've really learned in the pros is you, you know if you take your eyes off the prize for even a split second, that can be the end of the that can be the end of it for you. So concentration and focus are uh, extremely important, and that's yeah. something that I'll be bringing to this fight, um, like I have to the other fights. But it's something I've been working on a lot, and. Uh, it's really starting to come to fruition for me as my levels of concentration and focus in the ring. So I think on Saturday I'm going to be razor sharp and you're going to see a very switched on, mature performance for me from the first bell. And I uh, know the last, last time was an eight-rounder, so this time you're stepping back a bit? or No, this is an eight-rounder again. again? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So I'll be on to my fifth fight and I've had two eight-rounders. Um, and hopefully then... Yeah, just keep going this way and keep racking up the rounds. You know, the longer fight... the, the the longer fights suit me better, so I've got a good engine. My physical condition is spot on. Stephen always has me in great shape, so uh, yeah. But, but I mean, if, if things go into plan, you're going to be well, well positioned for for those bigger fights down the road. I mean, obviously you're talking about Saturday first and foremost, but yeah. it, it works for that. And I mean, and, and and if if that cardio keeps up and that engine keeps going, I mean, you're going to be quite a, a formidable opponent for people who fancy themselves. Yeah, well, listen, that's, you know, um, if, if your goals are really to be a world champion, which mine are, then uh, why would you be taking easy fights now? You know, you got to be getting yourself ready properly and realistically for world championship fights down the line. And that's where my plans are set to and that's where my goals are. So uh, for me to be fighting anything less than 
someone who's going to give me a good fight wouldn't be doing that justice. So it's important for me now to be getting, getting myself the experience and uh, developing the skills and the engine I need for what my ultimate yeah. goals are, you know. And, and I think pretty much everybody in O'Rourke wants to be a world champion. I mean, that's a really good sign of a gym and that's yeah. a good place to be training yeah. in, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah, no, the gym is buzzing at the moment. Um, there's a great atmosphere in the gym. Stephen's got us all in great shape and uh, we're all training hard. It's uh, very much, uh, you know, the, there's no mess and it's all hard work in the gym. And uh, mm. it, there's a little bit of time for some banter, but, you know, when we get into our gyms, we get into, when we get into the gym, we get into our sessions, we're all very switched on and um, we're all striving towards the same mission, so. And a, and a few big personalities in there as well, which is no harm in a way, as it keeps everyone on their toes. Yeah, that's it, yeah. There's a few, there's a few good characters in the gym and it's always a bit of banter, you know. Um, it's always an interesting day in Aurora's gym, so yeah, it's good. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and and again, so how, how do you find the pandemic fighting? Because Aurora's are the only gym that's flying through the pandemic. Pandemic hasn't bothered me one bit, um, to be honest. It's been an opportunity for me to really focus inwardly on myself and my career, and uh, I've been on I'm not even six months of pro now, and I'm heading in for my fifth professional fight so um, I can't complain um, I've been very fortunate that I've been able to continue things as normal um, uh, and just continue improving and working on my craft so um, the pandemic hasn't been much of an issue for me if I'm being brutally honest yeah and again I mean like a pandemic aside even back to years I mean we know there's problems with fighting in Ireland particularly professionally but I mean there is no fighting at all in Ireland now there's a pandemic you guys are punching in the, the events every few weeks I mean like can, can you even relate to people when there was fights on that they might spend a year between fights or two does that make any sense to you because everyone who works seems to be fighting the whole time I mean it was you know it, it certainly wouldn't be a way I'd like to be um, whatever the capacity would have to be to continue fighting I'd figure it out because mm. uh, I think it's important to be active just as it is an amateur you know um, when I was an amateur, I was busy, and now as a professional, I'm busy, and that's the that's very key to improving uh, at that kind of exp exponential rate. Otherwise, you know, you do get ring rust. It is a real thing, and if you're not uh, fighting and getting yourself in that competitive frame of mind, it's very easy to for things to slip. You know, so um, I think it's important that we're continuing these continually fighting and mm. staying active and keeping ourselves switched on and focused on what we have to do, you know, not getting I, distracted. Yeah, and I mean, I know pr probably the sites are further afield for yourself, but it's, I, mean, I had this discussion with Steve the last time he was here that, um, you know, because you're out in Spain with competitive events or competitive fights with, with journeymen, I know yours aren't journeymen lately, yeah. but you guys are going to be a hell of a lot sharper than people who didn't fight or people who just sparred or even, you know. Yeah, listen, like anyone will tell you, like sparring and fighting are two whole different entities you know you can spar great and be a world champion in sparring but it's not the same as fighting you know there's nothing like those fight night feels and being in the ring and when there's something at stake and there's there's everybody's watching and there's pressure it's a whole different ball game so uh, something I've really grown to relish and I'm really looking forward to Saturday night now so I can't wait for a competitive fight uh, yeah and, 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 so. and again presumably that the constant travel now is is um, it's just preparing you for the time when you'll be traveling more, you know, maybe, maybe it's your first time traveling, it's kind of hard, but if you're doing it all the time, you just take it in your stride, you know, there's going to be long flights, long delays, long yeah, waves, and it's just what you do. We're doing lots of traveling, I'm getting used to traveling, and uh, the lads are getting used to me moaning, so it's it's uh, it's working across the board for everyone, mm -hmm. so uh, it's all good. So, um, the, so the future's bright. The future's very the bright. Super fly. Very, very bright. And uh, j just briefly again, I mean, it's all, you're a professional prize fighter, so it's all about money as well, so... Who, who's helped you get here? And it'll cost money to come out here. So who, who, who do you want to give a call to? Yeah, I'm very, I'm, I'm extremely fortunate to have uh, the sponsors I have, um, namely uh, Origina, uh, Grattan Motors, uh, Paul Merman and Ask Paul uh, Fight Store. Um, to name a few, mm. um, there's more, but you put me on the spot here, and I wasn't prepared to answer this question. <laughs> but the, those I named in particular have come on board financially for the last few fights and stuff, and it's been uh, it's been great to have them there to support me. You know, you know, and and, and, and you're determined to give them payback with, with some big things in the future. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, 
I have to mention Jerry Sheehan and Daryl Manny as well, mm. um, my uncle Trevor. But you know, it's yeah, it's it's uh, at this stage of your career, you've got to spend money to make money, and uh, you know, in order to be at the level I'm at, it requires. Uh, mm. full-time training so I, I don't have time to be working part-time or be working at all really I do a little bit here and there but it, it is important to have sponsors at this yeah, point in yeah. your career because you got to spend money to make money and yeah. uh, when I'm a world champion and what they're all uh, sitting ringside and the MGM grants it'll all be worth it then yeah I'm sure it will and um, and of course it's well worthwhile investing the pay-per-view for this fight alone Absolutely, and well worthwhile investing in a Superfly T-shirt and a Superfly Gile, you know. Yeah. Then you've got the full shebang. But yeah, no, it's... Uh, so basically DM you on the socials. And DM going. me on the socials, I'll look after you. I'll have you looking fly. Too fly if you're on good. Okay. Well, that's good. And, and, and I mean, like, you know, you're kind of laughing at that. But I mean, it's important as well. I mean, it's all part of the package of being a professional yeah. fighter. You need to get your merchandise right, you know, yeah. your sponsorship, everything, you know. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, things are going well. I think it's, uh, I think it's a nice... You know, my, my cousin made my logo for me. It's a nice logo. I think uh, it's a brand people can people can relate to, and people people like the colors are good. And yeah, I think I can see it growing nicely. So uh, th the future is bright, as you said yeah, already. Yeah. yeah. And listen, I tell you, I know that you're anxious to get off training there with uh, John Cooney. He's hanging around there, saying, "Where oh, are you? I can't wait to train. Can't wait to train. I'm excited about that. Listen, yeah. thank you very much. Best Thanks, of luck Jerry. on Saturday night. Thank, thank you very much, man. Cheers. Well, yeah. Done.